Hey everyone, real quick before we get into this week's episode, uh, just want to give some context to the conversation. Uh, I forgot to hit record for like the first five to ten minutes, so <laughs> we were talking about uh, record labels and uh, their effect on the music industry now versus you know 20, 30 years ago. Uh, so enjoy this week's episode. Big thank you to They Might Be Zombies for coming on. No, you, well, you, you being the scene, you you, you have a you have a band, and, and you know how hard it is to 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 get out there and you know get some platform where you can stream your music, where you can push your shows, and 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 grow from there. And I think uh, our label still does, maybe not to a certain extent to where it used to, but it does a lot for bands. Let me let me pass you on, my friend Jay. No, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, I, 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 no, I totally agree with yeah. you, with you were and. and um, but like, like, yeah, pretty much he said everything pretty much there. I mean, it still gives us a lot of exposure um, for shows. Um, it gives you a little bit more recognition, I, I would say, uh, as far as musicianship. It's not that a label is going to pick up everybody that plays music. Right. So they're still going to be very selective. So it, 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 is, it is an honor for us to, to play in that label. And, um, and it's a start for the band. You know, I know that... At the end of the day, it doesn't the label doesn't really matter as much as is 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 pretty much about the music and uh, and now we have this uh, foot in, keep making more music, keep grinding, and, and this is just a nonstop job. You just grinding, keep doing music. The most it's not like okay, we got to this label, uh, we release the music, hey, that's it, that's we're gonna make it. it. Maybe like maybe years ago it was like, hey, you signed to the level, get all this money, and people were like, yeah, let's relax now, and like maybe we'll record a record later on. So things have changed when it comes to that. But but it is an honor still to have that as a dream come true, uh, to to be in a uh, label. I mean, uh, that's what we set out to do. So I guess everybody, if you're in a band, you should have those milestones. You know where sure. where are we going? You know, okay, we're first milestone. Let's record uh, an album. Uh, what's the second milestone? Let, let's let's get a uh, you know, let's get a, uh, we want to be in a label. What, you know, it depends whoever, you know, what, what is your miles? Right. right so that right. was our, our, you know, we wanted to get there and, and, and that's what we decided to do from the beginning. And we ended up making it happen. And, uh, it was oh, just yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. no, of course, man. I, um, that's for sure. Something to be proud of. Um, when I was asking the question, it wasn't necessarily trying to paint record labels in a negative light. It's just that, you know, a lot of people have this idea now where, like, if you sign to a label, it, it means, oh, it's a 360 deal and they're taking from your tour, they're taking from this, they're taking from that. And that's not always necessarily the case. And I yeah, definitely we, we agree don't with. Have a 360. They don't take anything <laughs> from us. Well, yeah, and, no, then, awesome. and, then ag and then again, um, <laughs> COVID happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. So hey, um, everything that put everything in perspective. Everybody knows this, and and you just need to adapt. Labels are adapting, musicians yeah. are adapting, yeah. but, all businesses are adapting. Yeah. You know how it is. But you're yeah, right sure. about like you're right about like um the whole negative thing. Like, I mean, I mean, we 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 get haters all the time, and they're oh, all shit. Like, like, right. you know about the haters. Yeah, like, they, no, no, we, no, we, we don't just, care. We laugh yeah, about it, we, but we you can those. see it all the time. They're always yeah, yeah. like, you know, like, oh, fuck, they label on me shit, uh, this and that. You, you, know, right. you know, people are just, they're quick to throw something out there. It's and, easier to put, a, a, to put so, to try to put somebody down to try to uh, yeah. lend a hand. No, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. I, I get that a lot, too. Um, you know. How's your man doing? Uh, dude. No, no way. Uh, oh, okay. All right. No, no, no. Well, no, no, me, no, just... I, no, I'll put it, I'll explain it. I, I, I like talking about the band on the show. I think I've talked awesome, about this bro. topic before, but we had um, a really solid lineup for like three years. You know, like nowadays for us, like we see the bands around us changing, even Macronium. Um, first it was Kevin Gallagher. Now it's this Kevin. I was drumming in there like, like very sparingly. And then the bass player changed from Jay to Sandra to Lucha to Jay for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Eras One had a, a bunch of members. Uh, um, forgot the dude, the bald dude. Kind of looked like Kevin a little bit. Played guitar. Um, uh, and then they, you know, they had Charles. So I, we always saw bands around us kind of having rotating lineups. So for us having a solid lineup for like three years, pretty much the whole time I was with the band, um, it was consistent. It was strong. It was steady. We all liked each other. We all like hanging out and shit. And so, um, at one point, one of the members wasn't necessarily carrying his weight 
So we had to drop him. It was um Dave, the guitar player. Um, shout out to Dave, like he's awesome uh, on guitar and I stuff. Hate when that happens though. Yeah, no, for sure, man. When you get someone that knows all the material, they're there for the live yep. shows. But it just when it came to the studio stuff, he he wasn't there. He, you know, it it would, you know, not to talk shit or nothing, but it was just sessions that were hours long that would in that right his usable wasn't there. stuff right. yeah yeah just live it was perfect but in the studio it wasn't it wasn't meshing so right. we had to let him go and then we were searching for another guitar player finally find one that's half decent and we play a great show uh kryptonite was the last show we played and he comes on and stuff and then in the midst of uh all that the key our keyboard player left and then right after kryptonite the guitar player that we brought in left so we're kind of like in limbo, like the core three members, me, Alex, and Brian, trying to figure out if like it's worth putting the time into someone else again. Cause we we put in like two months into teaching the guy the songs, getting him ready for kryptonite. But you're always um, gonna have that, or at least always gonna have that risk. You you know, it's it's up to like well, that's the first time I ever had to deal with that. You know what I mean? Right, right. They right, had right. dealt with it finding me, like finding a drummer, you know. So right. for me, it was a little tough to like deal with like shit like it's kind of inconsistent we got to start putting in the, the footwork and putting out ads and actively trying out people and setting up um, auditions and shit like that and uh when when you have consistency for so long you know what i mean it, it's kind of a, a weird place to be so uh that's kind of where we are right now like i love kryptonite i love playing i love playing shows and I, we have an album that's pretty much recorded and mixed. It just probably needs to be mastered and, and you know, touched up here and there. Nice. We just don't know if it's worth dropping it right now because we can't tour it. Um, you know what I mean? We can't. Uh, well, you don't know when we're going to all be able to do that. So, I I mean, my advice to you would be, like, still work on it, man. Like you go yeah. for it. That's a, that's your band. That's your dream. Those are your, your homeboys. Just, just go yeah, for we, it. Yeah, we, we were in the same position. We didn't know if we released the album or not. Can you right. pass the mic? Oh, my bad. Here. Oh, I'm saying we, we were in that same position. We didn't know if we released the album or not. Um, especially How did you guys we, come to the decision to actually to actually drop it? And what what, what was the questions like? Why didn't you were you guys not sure? because well, for us is, it, we is were, for like not having a band, like we don't have a okay. lineup. Well, well, we didn't have a band either. Right, right. So yeah, let's. Well, get well, 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 what what you know? We recorded that 2015, and um, then we we all got into this feud, and uh, pretty much the whole band broke up. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was no more. Now we had this whole album, you know, they, Sitting you know, there. with a bunch of songs and we recorded unreleased previously to the album. We had released two ep uh, EPs, uh, which some of the songs are in the album. Music so but, you know, we have like 13 songs and they were like, okay, uh, that thing is there, uh, for, for years, maybe three or four years, um, some of the man members didn't look at each other's eyes, pretty much. We didn't even talk. Really? It was that bad. It was that bad? Yeah, it was, it was bad. bad. So then it was like, we were, okay, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of stuff already, like, be, prior to the breakup. So then um, when, when the breakup did happen, um, we, when we, you know, we all settled our differences later on, and we started trying to play again. Um, not play again. Everybody's just pretty much past that. You know, we, we grow up older. We're, you know, we're not usually, we're not kids. I'm, I'm 39, 38. I'm 38. <laughs> you know, we're all like in our, our late 40s here, most of the band members, except for Kevin. Right. So now, <laughs> the, um, what, what happened at that time, we're like, we settled our difference as mature guys. And, you know, I, 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 uh, I was kind of like in the middle in a way. I mean, because I had Ewer in one side and then I had Lega, our drummer, on the other side. And he, he, you know, he didn't really want to play with this guy. You know, this guy didn't really want to play with this guy. So I will play sometimes with Lega, but without this guy. And sometimes, I, you know, so we will rehearse here and there. It was just yeah. like weird shit. So then, he, it, yeah. yeah. So what, then what happened is that we, I was like, look, we invested money on this album. You know, recording with uh, we recorded some of the songs at Beeler Brothers. It's it's freaking expensive, right? You know, right. sessions on um, drummer sessions. You know, paying you know five hundred dollars a day. Yeah, like you know, there 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 was it was a lot of expense in there. So we we probably spent like over ten thousand dollars recording that album. Easy. Fuck. Yeah, easy, easy. No, like man. you know, we had Matt Laplan who did Skin Red who get you know uh, non point. I mean, you know, we didn't just get anybody from the street. 
Right. You know, so we went trying to go to the top based on whatever we can afford. So then we were like, hey, listen, uh, I told the guys, look, at the end of the day, I didn't come into the band to, to try to make money or anything like that. I just wanted to play. I wanted to make good songs. And I just wanted to make an album based on a dream, you know, you know. So I was like, let's let's freaking release the album. Let's do like a goodbye release. That was the whole idea of this album. It was supposed to be a goodbye release. Okay. Like, so it's kind of like we did it. Here's the album. Peace. You okay. know, that's now, that's a big drop the mic moment for real. Yeah. Dropping so, an album and then quitting. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, so that, so that was that the idea. Is either is either, but no, th th this is when we got back together right, already. Right, 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 right. And so you know, I came to Ewer's house one day, and I told Ewer, "Fuck it, you know what? Let's do this shit, and let's just release it, and fuck everybody." You know, right. excuse my French. <laughs> I was like, I don't care because at this point, I was I was exhausted of of yeah. like hearing one side and hearing the other side, and on this and this and that and this and that. So we're like, you know what? Me and you are here. Let's fucking put up a website. Let's call our contacts. Matt really liked the album. He wanted to release the album for a while. He was like, guys, I know a lot of contacts. I could get you guys maybe with uh, with um, with Combat. Uh, we had, um, what was another one? He yeah, had... Um, he, had a, he was working something out with Nuclear Blast. Nuclear Blast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, so he really enjoyed the album. He, he was really psyched about it. So, you know, we were, I, I was really, look, we are, we are entrepreneurs. We have our businesses. We, we, we have family, we have kids, yeah. uh, wives, how, you know, like, so my mentality was not really to come back and, and, and go play it, you know, in one of those local bars. Right. You know, like, right, so, right. so I was like, I was like, okay, guys, you know what, you know, everything changes as you get older. So. We just decided to release the album. Then we told everybody, all band members, here's the website. We got signed uh, with a label. And here it is. Peace out. You know? It was kind of yeah. like that. And, and amidst through all that, we decided that maybe we can play. And that was mostly Ewer's idea. You know? Ewer had his friend as a bassist. And he wanted to get him in the band. I was really reluctant to it. I'm still reluctant to it now. Yeah. I'm saying so, so like then, so then he was like, and then he was playing with Kevin in a band. What's the what's the band? Oh no, we, we had a project with some uh, some guys with Eggy, right? Um, there was um the Hungarian guys. Hungarian, yeah. We had, we were in a Hungarian metal band. Okay. Yeah. This guy and I. Okay. So um, God Kings. So yeah, so Shout out yeah, to God, well, King. I, uh, yeah. God Kings. Yeah. That was the name of it. Oh yeah, here. here. So like then. <laughs> It's funny, he's in this God Kings thing. So he was like, I remember I went to see him. You remember when I went to see you one time? Yeah. And I saw Kevin play. I, we, Kevin had tried out for They Might Be Zombies like in 2014 when, oh. uh, when our original drummer had quit. Okay. And this was when we were active. We were playing shows live. So you guys, and when he came in to rehearse. Is it bald drummers only or? Yeah, so <laughs> there, there was like a few guys, but I was, I was so used to playing with Jose Lega. <laughs> <laughs> that I was like, you know, he tried out and I just didn't really like his style. He was he wasn't there. With someone I saw him this time around, we were, I was like, yo, this guy went from here to like here. Like his drumming is just was awesome. So I told him, hey, talk to him. And if you want to get the band started again, and, and then we go from there. And this is where we are now. Yeah, so we ended up here. we ended up from signing to doing a goodbye release to like, if you go look at our website, it's just kind of like a thank you, you know, to all the people and the band members, and that's it. That's what we were, we were just going to walk away from it and, and do all the life things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, travel and have a good time and go to the beach. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know? It's a lot <laughs> so, of work, man. People think it's, oh, you get on stage. Oh, my God, stage, bro. And all the practices and the rehearsals and the writing of the music. And exactly. The, so much time that people don't yeah. see for that little half an hour on stage. Oh man! Yeah, no, no. How many times that we that we were in Beeler Brothers, freaking two in the morning, recording a chorus, <laughs> and, and, and it'll be like, uh, if you can find me, okay. And 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 Matt will be like, okay, that's great, that's great. Uh, go 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 ahead and do it again. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're almost right there. You're almost right there. Just do it again. And he's yeah. like, if you can find, okay, this one is it. This one is it. This one. Is it. Okay, this is good. All right, all right, all right. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah, let's yeah, do it yeah. again. Two in the yeah. freaking morning at Boca Raton at Beeler Brothers. Yeah, that's, I was 
was crazy. Um, okay, so my, my take on the whole thing, and, and, and I, obviously, like Jay gave you a rundown on how everything happened. Now, just to put things in perspective, we, um, we obviously make no mistakes. We, we, are, uh, um, we are a very serious band now. We, we want to make, not that, not that we ever were not, but, you right. know, um, we take our music very seriously. Actually, we are recording again. Um, and we're we getting have a brand new song about to yep. release. Uh, yep, it's gonna oh, release. Really soon. Okay. Yes. yes, we're gonna start seeing. Okay, so you you probably you guys will probably start seeing this overlapping of uh, 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 singles being released because I, I I guess that's the way that musicians do releases now. Nobody does albums anymore. I don't know why because I love albums. But I've um, had this we, discussion before on this show. Yeah, right. I I, I bet you did. Uh, uh, so the thing is, the thing we we are getting ready to release one of them and um and and it's different of course it's different music the same you know it's the same band where we all have mature in our taste and 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 the way that we see things um but yeah we're gonna we're writing non-stop nowadays we getting together we we with there you know when it comes to to the music um because i always thought that uh Dude, the thing is like when once you're a musician and you you know that you're doing what you like and this is what you like doing why are you just why, why walking away from that? You get right. Me? So. right. No, I totally hear you. Um, I think I and it, it's always kind of a bummer. Like I've known a lot of people through life that, you know, oh, that that guy plays bass or whatever. And then at some point you see them and they don't play shit anymore. <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of like you hit them up like, hey, man, like uh, you still it's like, ah, no, you know, work or I got a kid now or this and that. And um, you never want to become that person. You know what I mean? But. You know, sometimes life gets in the way, you know, it's, it's really tough. So right now is a, like, how do you guys, uh, like cope with not being able to play shows and shit? I know they might be, uh, they might be zombies, uh, probably hadn't played a show in a while, but, uh, are the, is it, is it, they might be zombies or they might not be yeah, zombies? It, they might be zombies. Okay, I'm uh, not crazy. I thought you just, I they, thought you were they, saying they, I said it wrong. I was like, come on, be, dog. They might be playing. They might they be might. playing. We just don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so Kevin, let me ask you, cause you haven't said dick. Uh, you know, you're over there chilling, puffing on the e-cigar. I like it. Very, very yeah. chill vibe over there. Looking like a boss. Uh, <laughs> how you coping with not playing any shows, man? I know you I got mean, like three, four it, projects. It's it sucks, but it's also cool because like before the pandemic, I was like always fucking out at every show, networking. Like I was spread like thin as fuck. I was like on a stick of butter on like a hundred loaves of bread, which <laughs> didn't fucking work out, man. Right, right. And uh, the pandemic happened, and there were no shows, and you know I I wouldn't like there. I was like in fucking seven projects or something. So basically everything just stopped, and I was yeah. like. I, I got with these guys and then I have this project with my brother and basically just dedicated all this time to just writing an album and then learning this, these guys music and, yeah. you know, us practicing and getting tight and, you know, with, with the, with the other new member, um, Gio on the bass and stuff. So basically, you know, I, I learned from this experience and I don't, I'm not, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know about these guys, but that, you know, once ever, all the fucking f bullshit that's floating around is gone you realize what you really have to focus on and then like you attack it. And, and now I've, I've gotten so much completed like personally and even with them, like learning all their shit to a T and all this stuff. And like, now I'm like, damn, like shit's starting to open up. Now people are like, Oh, let's go to the bar. Let's go to this show, whatever. I'm like, dude, fuck that. I just want to work on shit. Like I'm, I'm done <laughs> flying around being an asshole, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's a good time to focus and write some shit and like, like take it, take it in. Cause, cause you know, when, when you, when you're so super busy and, and you, you tend to lose like, like side of like what really matters. And then I think, uh, uh, although this whole situation sucks and there's a lot of entertainment, companies out of business and there's a lot of uh uh bro our favorite places are closing what's up with that yeah you know yeah. uh remember yeah. o'malley's remember dude oh, what the hell i literally mentioned it's like it's it, it, it's not close but it's the plane shows metal shows anyways yeah. like, to me that's that's close yeah. So, yeah. So, right you, you know what i'm saying so we're losing our favorite venues here so um so what's up with that so this is the time to 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 be creative if 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 you're not doing something now like you're gonna regret it later that's how I see it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think it definitely gave everyone a chance to step back from the live shows. And um, 
like focus on like you said being creative if that's what you do you know what i mean um i feel bad for people that aren't like creatives like in this time like all they had was work and go home because like i mean you lose your job or whatever then what the fuck do you do with your time you know yeah. like i can't imagine not coming home and playing my kit for a little bit or thinking about booking a podcast or editing a show or something like that you know or even like uh, I, i'm really into vinyls like that's like a whole process you know i want to listen to an album i gotta pull it out and pop it in and blow the fucking dust off of it and shit like if you don't like music you don't do all that shit you know what i mean Correct. So there's that. But uh, let's talk about the music video for Motives. Uh, Motives. When did you guys film that? Five years ago, too? Or, I mean, no. Kevin was in it. No, so no, no. no. You, you, can see, you, you can definitely see Kevin <laughs> and, and Gio there. Um, we, um, we, uh, um, that was our first thing that we did together, actually, the, a video. Um, we, uh, I, I have a background in, in film. And, um, yeah, so, so you're the to, director, right? Yes. So um, I I decided to. Hey, the, 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 you didn't give me credit on on the on the face thing. That was my idea. Yeah, man, that's that's yeah, definitely his. Yes, yes, no, yeah. Face well, I'll face give him credit. To, uh, here. You you gonna you gonna you, you're gonna get the, his credit right now. So okay. I, I I totally forgot to 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 thank him for the yeah, idea yeah, of the yeah, animation yeah. and the chorus. Okay, that was Jay's idea. Everybody. Hey, shout out! To <laughs> Please, out yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, yeah, we have a, we have a, we have a, a really good chemistry when it comes to like the creative process and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we um, we we um, set to 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 do everything the right way from the get go with the video. So we got this place with a with a control room, and then you can see I think Brandon from uh, Studio One did a. Step One Studio? Okay, yeah. Brandon from Step One Studio did a, a background, uh, like a behind the scene uh, video, and you can see all everything that how it went down. And uh, and I want to give props to Brandon. He's a really really good camera guy and a really really good director of photography. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Really yeah. So actually, he's doing this guy's video too. Yeah, he's coming out great. I don't want to say anything. What what band? Oh. I, I got a band with my little brother, uh, my little brother Robert from Wicked Playground. Shout yeah, yeah, long hair. I couldn't believe you guys were brothers. Oh yeah, it, it, it's could not believe it. Full blooded brothers, same mom and dad. Same hair, bro. He just looks yeah. like my mom, which is little and brown, and I look like my dad, which is little and white. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, we I got a, we got a band we started together called Paradise, and uh -huh. uh, so we we got Paradise. a. Yeah. I like it. We got a 15 song album uh, halfway God, done. Damn, you guys work fast, bro. And uh, yeah, man, uh, this whole year we just went balls out. Like, you know, all these ideas I had sitting on the balls, back burner. Because like I said, I was, I was spread so thin and finally attacked it. But yeah, Brandon Temple from Step One Studios, like amazing fucking music producer, videographer. Like he's good at all that shit and he really helped us out and he's really helping me out too. Yeah. Uh, is that um, just you guys or are there other members in the project? Uh, it's just us, like it's studio wise. Right now, we're trying to find a band, uh, like a, a, a lineup. So far, we have a few potential people, but the most important thing we're looking for right now is a keyboardist, which is basically impossible. goddamn impossible to find here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't gotta tell me, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. Dude, ever since we lost the keyboardist, it's been it's been a whole other thing. It's one thing to find like a piano player, but to try and find like a metal keyboardist. Yeah. Is like yeah. yo. No, no, no. We're we're trying to find because we're like kind of like seventies prog, like but with like hard rock. So I'm trying to find somebody that can pull off like the Pink Floyd kind of shit, which is even yeah, yeah. harder to fucking find. Oh fuck yeah, dude! That guy's a master. I forgot his fucking name. Rick Wright. R is it right? Okay. Yeah, on. Rick Wright. Yeah. Gotcha. That guy is fucking dope, man. Too bad he died a couple years yeah, back. Yeah, for real, dude. I band, man. God damn it. Never get. Best there's some. The there's some bands that I think about. It's like fuck. I'll never get the chance to see him. You know. Oh yeah. man, and then you start going down this portal of all these bands, Led Zeppelin, other doors. Yeah, I see Van Halen. Yo, I well, you know, I never got to see Van Halen. I was never Me not either. not that I don't like Van Halen. I was just I, I wasn't too big into like the hair, the hair rock kind of oh, stuff, you know. Man. I like GNR, but I never liked Motley Crue. I never liked Def Leppard too much. I don't know. That era is kind of up and down for me. I was more into the thrash metal of the era, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth. I don't know. I can't get over Dave Mustaine's voice. Am I the only one that finds his voice? Oh, he... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, come on, man. Like he's an amazing guitarist. I'll give it to him all day. But do you Sounds guys like a house that smokes cigarettes? Yeah, for real. <laughs> you know what? 
I, yeah, I know. I don't like it as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, like I said, he's a great guitarist, but I don't like his voice. Uh, I know a lot of bands don't like getting compared to other bands, but you guys gave me a very the singer. You are, you are you the singer? You say you're the singer, right? So you do yeah, the yeah. cleans and the screams. Yeah, I do both. I do everything. Slight bars, clean screams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, screams, rapping, <laughs> growling, rapping. We are voices. It, you gotta do what it takes, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I thought it sounded great, and I was gonna say Thank it you. gave me very um kill switch engagey type vibe. Yeah, it could be, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean, I mean they're, 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 I'm a fan. I all, we all love it. Uh, so that's a great comparison. I don't think it's quite accurate, but I love that. <laughs> uh, you see, you see, no one likes it. No one, no one ever agrees. No one ever agrees with the comparison. But well, yeah, it is what it is. When every the, the thing is like, and I remember we did an interview with the Hub Bangers uh, Latin America, and she was asking us this question, like, what kind of like style you guys do? Like, did you know the simple? That's the 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 and. I don't know, man. I don't think I ever gonna answer something different. We just do metal. Like I don't have to say, oh, because we're progressive metal, blah blah blah. blah. I, I, no, you just play music, and this is what we you 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 give us that rating or whatever you you think it is. It's, it's like we just like playing the music that we like. That's pretty much how it is. You know, yeah, it I feel you. this way it comes out this way. If it comes out this way, you know how it is. How do you so, feel about all those subgenres? Stuff. Do you Man, feel like it's unnecessary? Or? I think that shit killed rock and roll, to be honest. Like, one, not completely, but I think the whole fragmentation of rock and roll really was one of the nails in the coffin because there's before it's just here, it's rock and roll, it's on the radio, that is. But then it's like progressive pop polka, like fucking, right, right, fucking right. you know, melodic death, a thrash, fucking techno. Yeah. Like, it's like, what the fuck? You have such a fragmented audience that there's no common ground for anyone to share. That makes a lot of sense, and I'm surprised that I haven't heard anyone with that take, like ever. Well, that's so, I, I see it like that too. So, yeah. I never, I've never, I've heard a bunch of people say rock and roll is dead, and they can never tell me why. But well, that's actually probably one of the better reasons I've heard, because I, I hate to agree with that statement that rock and roll is dead. But I mean, fuck, bro. As far as like a, a, a you don't, you don't want to make um, music for money, but monetarily, like Lee, monetarily. It's you know it's not up there with the other genres right now. Just oh yeah, definitely not. Play no and and no stuff money. like that. No, I'm not saying there's not, of course, but I'm just saying like in those certain subgenres, like let's say a progressive metal or or metal core or any of these weird subgenres, like all the really famous bands have been around for twenty ten years at this point. You know what I mean? Like I haven't seen like. Oh, this is the hot new metal band that you gotta exactly. be following. Like, it, you know what I mean? It's so long. It's a lot of gatekeeping and a lot of like you don't. See, it's like hip hop, trap, all that shit. There's like some new person that comes out and they're already headlining festivals and shit. Like every and other that. week is somebody new that you never heard. Yeah, of. And, and another thing too is that I feel like in in the rock world, the metal world, and stuff, people are more making music for other musicians. They're just jerking off to each other instead of like playing to regular people. You know, because like no one's gonna like a your regular guy in Ohio that works fucking fixing cars is not gonna hear like a breakdown in seven eight and be he's gonna be confused. He's gonna be like, "What the fuck is this?" You know. Right. So like, I, I feel like they're splitting up too much, and instead of like making music with soul, which yeah, progressive shit, I love it, I play it, but like you know, people have to remember that it's not just a formula. It's not just a oh, let me see how much I can impress my peers, and instead of just putting your emotion and 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 you know. Uh, Make, making your mark that way I, I feel like there should be a mixture of both instead of just one big circle jerk of oh my god look how sick that guy is oh look how sick that fucking guy is yeah that's great but you know do regular people feel it that's another fucking take i've never heard and i think maybe it's because the people that don't have that take are the people that are doing that exactly which is you know making music that other people are going to be impressed by instead of just making Let's keep it simple bro make. yeah yeah, and I, 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 I'm, I feel like I found myself in that trap before where, like, I'll mm -hmm. lay down a, a drum track that I think, you know, is pocket and keeps the, the groove of the song and shit. But somewhere in my head, I'm like, ah, it's too simple. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I feel like that's when you start, like, kind of overcomplicating shit and maybe adding shit that doesn't need to be there all the time. Right, and you end up with a whole different formula of who you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, maybe like your your gut instinct to to stay in the pocket is really what works best in in that song. But you get in your head, and you know, an artist is their own worst critic most of the time. I know me personally, I I shit on myself all the time. <laughs> like, like ah, you know what I mean? Like I'm so in my head about it. So, 
Um, I get a little bit self-conscious in the studio sometimes, like, oh, like I said, that that's too simple or whatever, and I feel like I need to add extra fills or whatever. Right. So I definitely understand where you're coming from, Kev. Uh, I appreciate that point. Um, now, with the music video, though, because we didn't, I mean, right. we yeah, yeah, about yeah. the I was going to tell you that right now. What was the idea of it? Because well, like, I saw that... the three screens and stuff. It was a cool yeah. live performance. Uh, I'll explain video. real quick. Cause, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember, actually, that I have talked about that with anybody. Um, good. And it's good that you asked that. Um, the video was a, I like, this is what I did. Um, um, I wanted to have um, three set of imagery that will go edited to the song, right? Um, and I don't want to complicate myself too much, but pretty much I edited three videos, one with the lights, one with the red background and the scenery and, and things that could um, narrate in, in, in visual elements the song. And then, and we have um, um, material there from, from real um, 1940s um, um, psychiatric treatment, you know, in black and white. We have a lot of imagery there. It's like- How'd you guys we have get a lot. the rights to that stuff? Like yeah, well, the here's the thing. With that one specific, it is, um, it is, uh, it's free. Guy? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's that, yeah, that, yeah, that's free to me. That one right there is free to me. So we, everything else we, we have, you know, pretty much either we shot some of them. We, we have some, some friends that, you know, that, um, that own them. We, we, we pay rights, etc. cetera. Uh, but the main thing was to, to have that imagery and then film the band. So we edited three versions of the same video, then play them back to back, play the band, play the musicians. We wanted to make it simple. You know, yeah. we're COVID, there's not a, a lot of multiple locations scouting and there's another, you know, and, and people that do videos for a living, they can tell you this. Yeah. It's very hard to film, at least in Florida right now. Um, and, uh, um, you know, like the Florida, film Florida, org and all these organizations, they, even though they say, yeah, you can go and film there. Well, I, I bet if you go and they probably tell you, no, bro, it's, it's COVID, what are you talking about? So, so yeah, it's, it's wow. not really yeah. available for, for, yeah, there's a lot of places that are not available for filming. So, so I was like, you know, I skip it simple. Let's get a studio. Let's get, we get some screen led screens and make whatever it needs to be made there. So we did it like a four camera setup really quick. Um, Everybody happy. Then Jay had the animation idea for the course. And then we did the video, man. So that was uh, our modus video. Um, we um, you were editing yourself or you just direct? Yes. Yes, I did the editing. How, did you, what, how do you do that effect? I mean, what is your Which secret, one? sir? Which one? The effect, the face effect. on. The oh, board. that's, that's yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, I think that the good editor is the, uh, an editor that, that can manipulate different techniques and, 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 and in, a suit, in a suit way that, that where, where people don't see the card or whatnot. But if you think about it, there is a element of, um, of a loop integrated with my face actually in that wall right there, because that was something that we ca came out, that idea came out way after that video. Oh. Yeah. So we, Jay, we recorded it on the phone. In that phone, we recorded me. And then, uh, yes, and then we, we integrated uh, uh, an animation loop. We added to the animation loop. We made some, some, some structures in 3D using After Effects. And then we did, uh, we chroma the face to it. And that's, that's how it is. That's fucking dope, man. I wish I knew how to do shit like that. You went to school for that? I did. I went to AI in Dallas. I went to AI here. Um, art Institute? A, the, the Art Institute, yes. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah film, cool. yeah. Cool. Yeah, 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 that's very dope. My cousin went there for a graphic design. He was the original awesome. producer of the show, uh, and you know he's done a lot of um, uh, like t-shirt designs and stuff like that for the band throughout the years. Actually, most recently he was like doing our lights. Like we had a an actual like light show going on with our band, and he oh, was that's doing. Your cousin? Yeah, that was my cousin Malik. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So he was, he had like a DMX board and he basically, he had to come to practice. He was part of the band basically. And he was oh, doing nice. the light show like in sync with us. Like he knew oh, all the drops cool. and shit. Yeah. Different colors to do. Yeah, and yeah, it, cool. we, and the reason we did is because the, the, the original lineup was, we were all pretty like nerdy dudes, you know, like we didn't have like good stage presence. Like it was there. It was okay. I, I was probably me and, and the keyboardists were probably like the most hyped dudes. Uh, Alex too. I'll give Alex some credit, but the two guitarists, the two guys that are supposed to be, you know, wiling out and back to back and this shit, right, right, they right, were like right. the tamest dudes, you know. So we're like, hey. we got to figure out some way to cover up this blend, <laughs> you know. So let's get a light show, 
and smoke and fog it out. We that that was the fog and everything was definitely Macronium inspired. Nice. Have you seen Macronium live? I have a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, they're yep. fucking phenomenal. I can't That's wait. That's crazy. For it's the crazy. I like Macronium it. Show. I like the energy of the singer a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe takes it to another level every time. Yeah. It doesn't matter if there's one person or uh, a yeah. million people. He takes it to the next level. When it comes to production, let's just go show, close that chapter in the video. Um, we, yeah. I, I, I don't. Well, I wouldn't say we are one of the only bands that, that do that from the starting bands. But uh, like for instance, Gay and I, we, we own an animation studio. So we, we, um, we are so sufficient when it comes to, you know, do productions for the band, the promos, right. and stuff like that. Um, I think that's always a plus, but, uh, but not, but not a... Yeah, uh, we're, 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 yeah. yeah, pretty much when it comes to the art and visuals... Um, I, 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 um, Ewar does a lot of the editing on all this stuff, but, uh, I'm also very creative. I, I, I went to, uh, to college for uh, graphic design. So like when we released the album, we did that whole website and art and graphics in one day. Oh shit. Like, okay. <laughs> so we did like from videos and, and doing like that. Yeah. We, we're very resourceful ourselves to creating content. Like he were, he's master commando at, uh, at, at doing a lot of this. I mean, if you, have you ever, haven't seen some of his lyric videos, they're pretty badass, and he does everything by himself. And yeah, um, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's been like a a great help for the band. Like I think, like definitely, like in a band, as, as uh, you know, you you could pitch in as a musician, but it, if you bring other stuff to the table, uh, it, it just puts the band in a, in a much better position uh, when it comes to graphics and, and anything, you know? So that's, that's been a, a great plus for us. Like, like even a dying voice. I mean, you, you have you seen that video? Uh, I, I watched a bit of it earlier today that, uh, with the, that audience. video is awesome too, man. That was our, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, that that we filmed that, I man. Saw the one that I saw, it came out six, like six months ago, it said. So did, were you guys? Yeah, we, we re-released, we re-released everything. Well, oh, we didn't okay. have anything okay. online. Gotcha. Pretty much the, the, zero of the content was online. But you could tell that the dying voice, um, compared to motives, motives, I mean, them, them motives, but, but dying voice, you could see yeah. that Lega, our old drummer is still there yeah. and our old yeah. basses. Yeah. For being a first production, I think for being a, a first production, I think a dying voice came out really good. Um, yeah. uh, we didn't even know what we were setting ourselves to do, uh, and I think we did. We we we, we talked about this with Tom Hazer and uh, and and David Ellison in one of the the uh, second you stream, uh, um, you know the the streaming that they were doing for for uh, for for you know um, music um, Grammy Music Foundation and and and. and it was so weird to just go there and uh, let's call what area jet day or area day yeah, day that one Aerojet day, uh, yeah, yeah that yeah, that that thing that dude that was crazy we went there and it's like got there what like four in the morning pitch black back to back trying to walk a mile towards where the location you couldn't Easy, see anything right. it was it was insane but it was a fun experience you see and it was the first yeah. video that we did uh, um um in the band <clears throat> and uh and yeah, but but Jay's right as far as the the you know imagery and stuff like that, and 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 you know it, it although it's not a necessity for for a band to have like members and what whatnot, it is very very much necessary to to at least be attached to somebody you know that that can bring something like that to the table. And you know, I'm talking in general, um, I do believe that 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 you know, the, of course, the, the most important thing here is the music, but. Uh, but that, that that helps. Um, so yeah, that'll cover the video part. Um, we did, um, and that'll be um, motives. We actually working on some other ideas, but it's top secret right now, as I can tell you. But yeah, oh, we're making more videos, on, man. man. We're making more videos. That's just pretty okay. much what it is. <laughs> Fair enough. No, but um, I think that's awesome, bro. Um, and I do agree with the point uh, said by Jay that if you do bring some extra other than music, that it does help. Uh, that's why, uh, like, our album, we recorded it all in-house because our, our guitar player, Alex and Brian, uh, their brothers, they uh, pretty much own a bunch of recording equipment they've been collecting over the years. Oh, they did that for you guys? Uh, they recorded for you? Well, they're, they're in the band, so. Right, right, right. But they, they record. You guys record yeah, yeah, yourselves. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. 
Um, la batería, la like, mismo estudio. Um, so, you know, we work with what we got. You know, the first EP I did it was an E kit. The second EP I did it was an E kit, but tweak the sounds around a little differently. Um, like the, we got some experience from the first one, took it into the second one. And then for this album that we're sitting on right now, I did acoustic drums because um, I just, I just like the sound from live cymbals a little more than E kit yeah. cymbals. Um, that, that's just kind of like the whole reason for it. It's such a pain in the ass to record acoustic drums versus electric drums. Um, yeah, you have to set it. But it feels so much better to play. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in my opinion, it was definitely worth the hassle and, and the four or five, six hour days or whatever sitting in here. Um, so I definitely like that. It's just uh, when you're uh, in the studio and, and you're on drums and you're doing some crazy double kick stuff and they're like, ah, you know, let's do another take. You're like, hey, man, I'm cramping up over here. Can you just give me a second? You know what I mean? Let me let me relax. Let me stretch. Give me a Gatorade. Cause I'm a yeah. I'm a big dude, so some of these parts, <laughs> man, you know, in metal, hey. it's like, and then you, and it's got to be perfect because you know you're ch you're playing along with the guitar chugs or the, the 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 guitar alternate picking and stuff, so it's definitely a, a mission sometimes to record some parts, but it's always fun. It's part of the process, you know. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like like in that regard, like you 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 do the graphic design for your band, and then you had to outsource you know recording drums and you know paying money for that whereas we're kind of the opposite we recorded stuff in house right. but for art stuff and album shit and music yeah. videos we had to go and find people to do that yeah. for us so yeah. it always helps when you bring other stuff to the table and that's really the main reason i started this podcast because i didn't bring much to the table other than my drumming so i felt like if i start a podcast um where i interview other bands and i talk about my band then i just give my band a platform to promote ourselves anytime we drop an album Correct. and this is your episode you know, number what um 112 so you're yeah. doing good man you, you yeah. keep, keep is, doing it this, yeah yeah yeah. this is something that we wanted to do here too oh, yeah. uh we were actually okay. talking about it well starting our our they might be zombies podcast Damn. um and uh we, we were thinking about it is it, either since we have an animation studio though there's two things we're thinking of um you know dropping the mic here uh, we're <laughs> we're uh, we are creating an animated series okay okay on the band you know this is a, i'm i'm gonna say it as much as that they so might either he's the cartoon yeah okay yeah that's yeah. dope <laughs> You'd be the only band around here with action figures. I know that. Think, think about think about this. Think about Death Clock with uh with Super Jail. <laughs> like some crazy I've shit seen like that. Two, I've seen Death Clock. I'm not too familiar with Super Jail because I heard some I, crazy I, 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 ass I, I, shit. I, I, yeah. I heard some crazy shit. I kind of avoided that show. Not gonna lie to you. Yeah. 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 So we wanna, yeah, we don't you don't want to do the same thing as Death Clock, but so it, it, we're deciding if either we, we do the podcast. Cause I know this is hard work too. You gotta, you you know, like this thing is like you gotta work it, man. You know. Yeah, no, don't do a podcast. Not a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we either put the energy in in the podcast, or we put the energy towards making the series, and um, you know, get we'll it. See. We'll you know, see. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. see where everything goes. Uh, um, but yeah, we. Yeah, this is this is this, this is, is definitely in the plate. Yeah, nobody knows about this. Well, now I do. know. Now all my you know, nobody knows about this. This is I know I, about I, it next Friday. They will. There you go. I don't know. You, this is secret <laughs> stuff. You you won't probably cut this off because I mean they have to oh, sign non disclosures. No, 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 no. That's not. I can't send NDAs to all my people. You're just gonna have to let it out of the bag, man. It's all over. right. Yeah. They're gonna all know. Right. It's fun. It's fun I to, actually. It's fun to be able to make projects like that. And I think it's a dope enough. idea, man. I think you guys should do it. Um, whether it's a podcast or the animated show, I right. think you guys should do it because yeah, it comes uh, back to the same here. thing that people need to be creative in these times. Yeah, you you, you, oh, yeah. you need to get stuff going. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. that's what you do, then you do that, and, and your podcast is going great, and then I'm sure it's gonna keep going. Uh, uh you have a, a see a tail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. That's my dog. That's uh, there you go. Here. So so um so yeah, man, I'm I'm sure that the the you know. You just need to keep doing it, you know, with passion and then get it out there, bro. So you know, what's crazy is the COVID is really pr probably the reason I landed my biggest guest uh, in June. Oh, uh, I, I got see? I interviewed uh, Johnny Christ from Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, yeah. yeah. And wow. um, like, yo, he would have never done my show if he wasn't sitting at home with nothing to do, probably. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it. You see, that's so, exactly what I mean. So you never know. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. they were my favorite band growing up. They're they're probably like competing for first or second right now. My tastes have just gotten a little different since I was younger. But I mean, right. the Rev inspired me to drum. Like when I so started, how was that like, dude? When I started this show, that was one of those things. Like that was like a pipe dream. Like oh, maybe one day I'll get to interview Avenged Sevenfold. Maybe one day, you know. There you go. So yeah, actually sitting there and being here like this on a Zoom call with Johnny Christ, it was like. I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't fangirl. Yo, yo, talk, talking about Avenged Sevenfold. Let's see it. Let's see yeah, it. Yeah, Show the guy, people. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Death Bat, would you have any kind words? <laughs> yo, that's I sick. Man. I love Avenged Sevenfold. The rev, bro. <laughs> dude, yeah. were you like all nervous and shit? You didn't know what no. to say? You froze? No. Listen, dude, let me tell you, dude. I was pacing in my room before this, dude. I was sitting here in the studio walking back and forth like fucking is this motherfucker really gonna get on the zoom call or not because he was late it, it was it, we i had talked to his producer because he does a podcast so that's how i, I approached him like that i'm like rock star. I, that was always eight. yeah yeah i've been like yeah i've been doing my podcast for 100 episodes you know you're you've been doing it for a little you know c come on my show be a guest on my show you get some practice this and that and he was like yeah man i think he'd be down to do it so uh the producer's like he'll be on at five um, on this day, just set up the Zoom call. So I'm sitting there. It's 5 o'clock, bro. Nothing. 5.05, 5.10. I'm like, oh, shit, man. He's not going to come on. Like, I, I already hyped it up. Like, I hadn't promoted it, but I told a bunch of my homeboys, like, yo, I'm getting Johnny Christ on my show. I'm getting Johnny Christ on my show. So I'm getting ready to send the text. Like, oh, he didn't come. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, finally, like, around 5.12, I get an email from the producer. Like, yo, my bad. He, a, a podcast he was doing ran late. He'll be on right now. And then, bah, he pops on, and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, he's just there shooting the shit. And at first, I was nervous, but, like, once I got into show mode, like, I had notes and stuff. Like, I never do notes for podcasts because I did notes at first, and I found myself asking everyone the same questions, and that shit got real right. old. Right. So I stopped doing notes. I like to do it off the top of my head. Like, I have ideas that I, that I want to go on, but I kind of let it flow. Um, but for this one, I had notes. So I had questions. I had a structure. So if I ever drew a blank, like I didn't know what to say, I would just refer to the notes and shoot off whatever next question I had. And I think it went pretty smooth. I had them for like uh, 25 minutes and it was probably the best interview I've done. Like, uh, for nice. 20, because it was so structured and I got right. to ask him about, um, like bands releasing an album like does it make more sense to release all singles does it even make sense to release an album i mean i felt like that was probably the most important question that i wanted to ask him because it, re it really i want insight from somebody who does it for a living you know of course. even though what he say? came up in a different era uh well he kind of basically said that if you have material that um like makes the goosebumps rise on your skin like it really gives you that feeling that Put it's it probably going to yep. do it to somebody else so put it out, however it is, whether it's two songs, three songs, 11 songs, put it out and put it out in a creative way. You know what I mean? With music videos, with whatever. So I think that's the best advice he could give. And he, you know, obviously the, you got to do it because you want to do it, not because you want to make money. Like if you're doing yeah. it just to make a profit, it's probably going to yeah. reflect in the music and it's going to, it's not going to yeah, be art anymore, never make it. you know, it's going to be. And, and this is, this is the, the big dilemma with most musicians. Right. And uh, I mean, we had people playing our band and oh you know all this, you gotta make all this money oh it, 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 it's not it didn't work out it, it, no investment is really really not I, I i know people yeah and i'm sure you know people there are been doing music for 30 40 years and they still have no money right you know they're old now and they're still chasing yeah but like with the same idea of trying to make money yeah, you respect it in a way. I respect it in a way they kept at it. <laughs> but in a way, <laughs> as, a, as a, an entrepreneur, and, uh, you know, you got to treat uh, music also as a business, you know. Um, but but at the same time, yeah, if, if you're in it just for the money, then it reflects on your music. Yeah, and it's, you hard, know? it's hard to find the balance, bro. I, I but, mean, but you need, yeah, you need to have both, both perspectives on it. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. the ideal situation... It's probably not at this point is not to make a lot of money, but to maintain yourself from your music. At least if you made enough just to get by and to pay some of your bills, you get, you're in a freaking amazing place. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, that's the dream, dude. It's not a lot of the people that really make music out here and in the scene and shit. It's not to make millions of dollars. If they can make their rent 
and some extra on their music, they're happy. You know what I mean? Because it's just yeah, it comes, a love. Yeah, you're happy. living out of plane, which is it, it comes yeah. out to like either you get a smaller place or you make more more money. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but there is a real business side of things, and that's yeah, where yeah. a lot of musicians get fucked. Of course, is when they're really good at their art. It's most of the time they're not too savvy on the business end and they end up signing some crazy shit or getting taken advantage of or they don't own their masters or some stupid shit like that. So you got to be savvy on both ends if you really want to reap the, the, the full benefits of it. Like staying independent nowadays is a lot easier than it was before when right. you 100 percent needed a studio. You couldn't do it right. yourself at all. And you 100 percent needed radio play and distribution. Now you, you can get your own distribution. You can get, you know, yep. your shit on Spotify yourself and Pandora and YouTube. And you can make it off one viral video. You know, you never know. You know what I mean? Like right. we said, these pop and sure about access. Now everybody has access. So let's yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, now, I mean, you hand out a CD and people are like, come on, man, a fucking CD. Like, don't give me a CD. You know what I mean? Yeah, G- give My me car a- doesn't even have one, bro. Uh, there you go. Just <laughs> yeah, more link, bro. Yeah. Now, yeah, that I, was like the thing is like, well, at least I could play it in the in the car on the way home from the show. But now cars are starting to take out the CD players, though. No? Like, you can't dude, win. Dude, I'm, I'm like from the era of the Walkman, the Sony Walkman. <laughs> and back in my days... My days, when I started, like, you know, uh, my days, I was saying on my teenage, um, I was listening to Papa Roach, you know, and Fast, and Slipknot, and Disturb. Uh, those, like, that's my era, when all those bands came out. Linkin Park, and at that time, dude, the Sonny Walkman was, like, the shit. They had it on colors oh, yeah. and shit, and then they had come up with the whole non-skip. Because I don't know if you take it oh, back yeah. a minute. It oh, used when to you be like a CD player, and you shake what, it? Yeah, so remember they had that skip? Yeah, And they'll have, like, five seconds. And then when you see one for 60 seconds, you'll be like, holy shit, 60 (laughs) seconds, no skip. That means I could jog for 60 seconds. That's crazy when you think about it. That's not too long ago. I didn't see that. (laughs) I never saw that. Dude, 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 uh, okay, well, (laughs) check this out. I'm Cuban, right? So I I got the United States in 2005. This is when I knew that my night was over. And Fuck about drinking and drugs and all that shit. No, no, this is this is what it did. I had a cargo pants with a bunch of double A batteries and a Walkman. All right. <laughs> when that shit ran out of battery, time to go home. <laughs> when that song started going, okay, uh, peace, my night is out. Damn, you, you get me? So that's, that's 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 how it is. That's how dependent on music we were. Fuck a car, Cuba. No, we didn't have batteries. cars. <laughs> well, son, you had a pocket full of batteries for real. Yeah, bro. That's next level shit, dude. Yeah, that's that's so cool oh, right there. How, how old are you? I'm 24. That's when we know we're old as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, listen, I used dude. to have a CD player, but I didn't used to carry spare batteries for dude, it. Dude, I remember my first my first job. Uh-huh. I, no, I, w- I was I was well, I was not even I was not even, I was not even I was not even 17, bro. I was like 15, bro. Go, my first job. Man. Listen, my first job, I went to wash dishes in uh in Hialeah. Oh, in his sure. restaurant and um after like four days of working washing dishes they paid me i think it was like 75 dollars and then i quit and i was like <laughs> I, quit too. I quit that shit oh, yeah. dude and i went and bought a, a walkman at downtown for 50 bucks and a papa roach cd for for 20 and I went to the dollar store. Twenty for a CD, goddamn, <laughs> dude. Twenty dollars. That's how much it used to cost for a CD. Fuck. And, and that was like and, twenty dollars, like back then, when twenty dollars was twenty dollars. And for a dollar, dude, check this. For a dollar, I bought um batteries. Used to buy batteries, the dollar store batteries. Yeah. But those dollar store batteries only last, last like one songs. day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> three like, four songs. Like, yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, in the freezer, right? You put them in the freezer. I'm telling you, bro, I'm coming from a country that, that already saw Kobe a long time ago. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny because it's like that that is not like that long ago, like right? yeah, based on what we have Yeah, you now. put it in perspective, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. It feels like it's forever ago. If you would have told me if you would have told me at that time, right? Like before Walkman. They used to have like, like you know how they go like iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, and they put the extra camera, and then it has all this memory. Back then it was like shit. They came out with 12 seconds 
12 seconds skip. And then next year, we got the new one with 15 seconds. I was like, holy shit. That's crazy. Level. Yeah. And then yeah. if they would have told me, like, yo, imagine 20 years from now, bro, it's going to be like five minutes skip. <laughs> 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 uh, that's the thing is technology is advancing so fast now man it's, it's really weird though because like retro is in right now too so imagine telling someone in the year 2002 or whatever like hey man in 18 years cds no one's gonna fuck with cds but people are gonna play vinyls in their house it's like yeah vinyls, it's, it's, why would we go backwards yeah. yeah history tends to repeat itself man it's just crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, we are we. So we are um, <laughs> we're putting we're putting some new new music and uh um, uh. Music should pro this new single should be should be releasing um I'm assuming, latest the first week next month, of November. Um, and I bro, can. That's like two weeks from now, bro. Yeah, but Matt told me that. That almost week, lines so up. Perfect. Perfect. No, no, we'll 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 see. We'll we'll see. We'll, you Maybe you see all the promos. Man, it could be, it could be. Um, the the title of yeah, we have. We want to do a video. Want to do it right. Title of the right, song. Right. Don't um, say anything. Don't say anything, bro. Yeah, what's the title? Give me the. I was about to say the people the title. Give the people the title. Come on, we're let's wrap. Let, we're at an hour. We're at an hour. So let's do the title. Let's give the people the title. You know, get them hype. Let's give and them then in about a week's time, but, and we'll give them a title. We'll give them a title, and then right before the release, that we change the title. Bro. <laughs> See, you bamboozle me. Do that. There you go, bro. Now it's a, it's called the panic culture. Hell yeah, let's go. Yeah, the panic it's, it's, culture. It's, the panic culture. Yeah, you're living in it. Yeah. But, okay, so, so okay, so that's all I'm gonna. I'm not gonna force any more details that's, out of you. It, no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's I'm kind of getting single. ideas already. Yes, sir. In my head of what it might be. Yeah. Uh, now. Let the people know where they can find your band, where they can find you, all your material, and uh, let's go ahead and skedaddle. Well, uh, yes, uh, thank you for having us, um, course, um, guys. Uh, you know, it's it's a pretty unique name, I would say. So you should Google, there might be zombies. We are on YouTube, we're Spotify. Uh, follow us on Spotify so you can get the latest. Uh, go to our website. We there's smart links on our Facebook uh, page so you can listen to the songs in your favorite platform because now you gotta give people choice uh but yeah so yeah we, they might be zombies Spotify. i have apple music it's like, there you go well there, there you but, go it's there but definitely yeah. definitely check out our youtube um yeah uh, just type in they might be zombies you'll see our uh, video motives uh if you, if you check it out some of the yeah so thanks man and uh motives is our last video uh, prior to that, there's a couple of lyrics videos where Edward did an amazing job on on the graphics. So if you if you enjoy, uh, yeah, if you enjoy like uh, good graphics, uh, go check out some of those videos. Another great video to watch um, where you could you know the the last one more is it comes out with the new members. Anything prior to that, which okay. you'll see the old members. So a dying voice, great video, and also there's a video of us uh, and collector. Also with the old man members, ma ah, band members, <laughs> and um, you can see us like performing there. Um, so they're 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 yeah, and um, and we'll be filming all the stuff. I, I just yeah. don't we don't know for this new si uh, song and if we don't say anything else. Yeah, <laughs> if what you know, but we want we we always trying to think outside the box and right. trying to bring something right. new and right. Right. and let's see what happens. Um, yeah, um, thank you for having us here, and uh, I want to say um, hi, Gio. Sorry you couldn't make it, and uh, that's for a bass player. Hi, Gio. Um, yeah, and we're good to go. It was a pleasure, man. Uh, hope you you get some members and stuff. So you know, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be hoping for we'll for you guys, and I hope you pray yeah. for for us too, because it's hard to find good people. But it was a pleasure, bro. If you need a music video, let me know. We hook you up. Okay, for sure, man. I, really right, man. I'm gonna I might take you up on that offer. Don't forget, hey, you know? go for it, bro. All right. Uh, now, if you want <laughs> to right, go luck to the show. podcast, man. Thank you for having us here. Hey, don't leave nowhere yet, guys. I still got Oh, go. I thought I thought it was it. No, no, no. Hey, let me do my Plex 2, Pablo. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> with you, but yeah, if you want to follow me, follow me on Instagram at the throne podcast with underscores. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out They Might Be Zombies' uh, last music video, Motives. Uh, it's fucking a banger. Make sure you check out their album, um, Reanimate. Animate. Reanimate? Yep. Fuck yeah, I got it. So got it. make sure you check out their album, Reanimate. Make sure you check out their video, Motives. And um, I usually let a song play. Uh, you guys want me to play Motives here at the end for the people? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to make sure and... <laughs> 
You tune in and listen to Motives right here on the same episode, and I'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Thank you.